pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Morning, everybody. I will call the meeting to order. We have a quorum. I will take a motion to approve the agenda. Second agenda. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. County Engineer Rich. Morning. A lot for you this morning. I did uh, make contact with John Deere. Um, so I'm doing a purchase agreement ready to go for that you know, that motor grade that we want to do. I don't know if you guys want to sign it or you allow me. It's in the budget for equipment. So we'll pay. The plan I have set up with them right now is to pay them probably $150,000 on top of what we paid for rental and pay them for paying off in July. So, and they're okay with that. So, mm -hmm. if you guys are okay with it, I'll get it moving yeah. and get it taken care of and we're done with it. So, okay. all right. Yeah. Sounds good to me. That's all I've got for you this morning. Yeah. Just a little bit about cleaning up that corner. Oh, yeah. So, you had brought that up a little bit. Uh, and I think what we might do, and I think might be a good thing to do, the corner by the wastewater plant there always had a bunch of material there. And I think, I don't remember if some of that came when we, we even, I think some of those piles were there when we when we got the road from the DOT. And I think some of it came from when the casino and stuff was built out there. Um, it's been an eyesore, I know, a while back. Um, we gave some of the material away. We had, and now it's just kind of all junk. And we had the, the landowner there would, volunteered to kind of mow it for us if we clean it up. I thought, well, maybe it's a better idea to go, maybe we'll dig a hole and bury all the remaining chunks and whatever, and then put some prairie grass in and put it up that way. So he, he was pretty excited when some of us were thinking about doing that. So. I think it'd be a good idea. Yeah. It, less maintenance for us, it gives it some, gives a little bit of beautification and yeah. habitat. So I think we might try to target that for some time this summer work. Maybe work with conservation or I know I'll get Mike Bodie on it. Yeah. He'll go gangbusters on it so and that's just in the right away coach well yeah, it's right as you come in you know, yeah you got, so the what? county owns that whole corner anyway so yeah, it's yeah. in that it's beyond the right away but in that wastewater treatment area so can we bury it in the right away just my one concern is if we bury it near that wastewater treatment plant or if we ever have to add on to that or change something out there no is that gonna be a problem later no we should be able to bury it i thought we'd probably bury it kind of right where it's at, kind of right where it's at. okay not moving and so if we have to call some out probably oh there's that much okay yeah it's a way to wait maybe 200. okay I, just, I couldn't remember how much how far away it was i just you know yeah. it doesn't be an issue all of a sudden we need a soils oh sure or something if, if that was ever to expand in that direction mm -hmm. we'll keep I'm, it away from as far away as we can right yeah. okay it should be okay but if we have to haul some material out i think it's something to clean that corner up it's kind of been a kind of been a I saw for years yeah. it probably should just be done. So yeah, I think we might try to target that. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I that up. Make it look nice. Yep. So thank you. Yep. The only thing I had was I got a text about the dust. Well, it's a little dry out there. But he was trying to figure out why we got it packed down and then the grader would go by and shuffle it around. It's the same individual that complained about the snow removal. Well, oh, that yeah, narrows it down to about 8,000 people. Well, up north in the. Okay. Anyway, I'd bring it. Oh, I, you may, he wanted to be on the agenda for next week. So I'm just. Yeah, it does get duster. Well, yeah. It's, it's, it does get duster when it, when it doesn't rain. <laughs> and, and sometimes we got to blade the roads to, yeah. like this time of year, it's trying to pull material in and cut the shoulder grass and everything else, kind of bring that material in for use in the spring. and. So, and it takes a while to pack it back down. It does. Yeah. So and I don't know if there's potholes. I, I guess just thought I'd bring it to your attention and I because I know last time you got the emails. <laughs> yeah. well, drainage. I didn't see any claims. So is Nate having to be here? I don't see any excuse coming. Okay. Well maybe. Well, well uh, I'll take a motion to approve the claims. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on them? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Take a motion to approve the payroll reports. Claims. 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 So moved. Second. 
I'm going to have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. No reports. Salary change. Who that on? Maybe we should rotate the table so we're all in the same spot when we're close to it. Hey, uh, Chad Workflow. Is that the way you pronounce it? Workflow. Oh. Works on? Okay. I'm looking through the salary change. Is there a second? Oh, sorry. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on it? All over the favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there any liquor cigarettes? Uh, disallowances for military and homestead exemptions? Those that no longer qualify? Do you want me to read this list or what's that? It doesn't. I'll make a motion to approve the military. We'll second it. I got a motion to second. Any further discussion on it? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Did you say that he was, is Nate happened to be on Zoom? There's a Nate on it, but I think that's Nate. Yeah, I think that's Nate Joseph. Yeah, I'll move on. Okay. Uh, next, we have Barbara and Truman Thrawn on a Slew Bill property tax exemption denial appeal. Uh, I'll get you kind of up to date on this thing. We all got an email from her representing her parents that they're, uh, that this was being denied, and uh, her her problem with it is is according to code, it states in Code four twenty seven period one property exemption taxable applications for this exemption must be filed with the commissioner of the Soil and Water Conservation District in which the property is located, not later than February first of the assessment year, on forms provided by the Department of Revenue. Well, the form that's provided by the Department of Revenue says at the top, this application must be filed or postmarked to your local soil and water conservation district by February 1st. So her mother and father did everything kosher because they filled it out. They dated it January 26th. They have that was they mailed it the next day because they live in Auburn Lee. It went through Minneapolis and it's postmarked the 27th. So done in time and um, because Janelle down the conservation only works Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, when she left work on February 2nd, they had not received it down there. When she came back to work on the 7th of February, she got it and immediately called the assessor's office and told them about it and the assessor's office told them that it was too late. Janelle appealed this thing for Barbara and Truman Thrawn. And then the assessor checked with the Board of Supervisors. And because of the date on it, it was denied. And she's appealing that denial. That according to what the state puts out, she did it kosher. It says it has to be postmarked by February 1st. So she's asking to appeal this thing. Now, any other thing that I didn't explain? Well, and when it was brought to us, it was signed off by the Soil Conservation on 214. Not to, sir. No, to accept. 
She might have got them in 27, but she didn't sign off on them. They, it wasn't right. signed. It did not get signed off till 214. And that's when she brought it up. And we already had our assessment notices out and all of that. So this is the only one out of how many we have. And I know um, Enos and I have been looking at that. It's what, a little over four acres, 4.32 or 4.32. And uh, we kind of calculated it really roughly. And we're thinking it's less than eight, ten dollars in tax. Right. That would be yeah. perfect. But what she's saying is according to, and of course, then I called Eric and I said, so I said, the code says one thing. I said, the paperwork. The state of Iowa puts out says another thing, and he said, "No, that's the one we use right now." So I, and I guess it's been this way for. Mm -hmm. anyway. So yes, because we notified soil conservation way before it was like last fall, and said you might want to get the forms out before because we know we knew that they just sent out copies of the forms and just have them sign it. Um, and we said we need those early because of the reval this year. And normally we do make exceptions and stuff. But, um, and Janelle did bring that to my attention. Yeah. That you guys had contacted her and she said, I made sure I got them there like a week or 10 days before I was normally, but this one I did not have at that yeah. time. So. so, I mean, it is what it is. I. And I know I brought it in that one morning and talked to you guys. And, and the thing and that's is, why I don't you remember. guys shouldn't be making decisions no. without having a meeting. And I wasn't making decisions. No, and they, yeah. No, See, no. I don't remember because I wasn't. No. It's, isn't it your it's, office does yes or no? Or we, we apply it. Gotcha. There, and, and like Enos and I were talking a while back, it really should be between the soil conservation and you guys. And I have stressed that for many years that the two of you, the two boards need to get together and say, this is how, you know, if we're going to implement it on our end, on the county level, then they've got to be able to realize that we have deadlines too right. on our side. Absolutely. But and I guess, you know, what they did do it right. They did it according to the sheet by the state of Iowa, yeah. Yeah, they did it right. I mean, we can't. That's what they're complaining about right now. It does say down here that the soil and county soil and water conservation district chairman signs off on it. And then it says that the chairman of the Worth County Board of Supervisors signed off on them. Are we supposed to be signing off on these things every year? We. Because these come out annually. No, you have no. But I think Joan just puts in a blanket that. They were all approved or something. But how can you do that if it doesn't go through a board of supervisors meeting? I think we've run some here. Right? It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think Joan usually put it on the agenda and said, you know, but I haven't seen it. I say we did four years ago. But again, and this was the project that I'm still working on um, to do on when I'm on my downtime. But again, this does really truly fall on you guys because every year you should be designating certain areas for the slew bill. And it's not. I, I, I finally found an ordinance and I'll get that out and, and or send that to you guys that you guys had put up, or not you guys, but the Board of Supervisors many years ago of the process. Um, also in that process, I found out that even people in the city limits of all the towns should not be coming through you guys at all. That needs to go to the city councils mm -hmm. and it's never been. And, and we have, we've got quite a few, more than I realize that are in different cities that have Slewville. Um, and I guess that's fine, but I think we all need to get on the same page that one, is it really slew? Two, who is checking those out? I know I've called, well, see, and I've called them right. a few times, yes, and said, 
they're mowing this, this is part of their lawn, it's not slew anymore. And they followed up with the landowner and sure enough, they said, yeah, they hadn't had slew there for a few years. Eric did say he checks quite a few of them. Okay. So, and the other thing that he brought to my attention off this code, he said it down at the bottom under B, it says that the commissioner certified that the property is eligible and that would be those commissioners. The application shall be reported to the Board of Supervisors by May 1st of that assessment year with a certificate, certificate of eligible acreages. So next today. So, but that's, yeah, according to code, it was wrong, but according to the form that the state of Iowa puts out, they did it according to just like it told them to do. And I don't doubt, I doubt very much that citizens go out and check code every time they go fill out. You, know, you do what the form tells you. You do what the form tells you. So, but it, it was just one of those quirky things that with the reval for the year, we had to have assessment notices out by February 10th. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't even signed by their board until the 14th. Which I didn't know because it's whited out. Uh huh. Uh, and I did ask them about that. They pulled out the original down there, and I didn't spot that. So I didn't look hard enough. No, that's okay. So that's what this is about on the agenda is they're appealing the decision and like, would like to be included in the, that 4.32 acres in the slew bill. And Eric, and Eric Butler says it is. And Eric Butler says it is. He's looked up. He's looked up. But it, it has been, they've had this every year. This is the first time they've run into that. Where that it got held up by the post office, it got held up down there. It was a timing on when she worked and when she didn't work. Well, and right. and also too, you know, I, I realized that they did have a postmark and everything. I guess so. What if it was postmarked and then lost in the mail for a year? Yeah, you, you know, I'm yeah, just what, saying what point do you allow or yeah. so I mean I'm not trying to sway you or or yeah, disagree or yeah, anything, true. but I mean, then don't wait till the last minute. Well, that was the other thing they do. Know, they do know the dates, and, and everybody knows what the mail is like today. But yes, and everybody knows that often it's work short. They only work two or three days. These places, and yes. So, if in the future, then. How do we how do we change this? Because if the sheet's still going to say the same thing, are we going to deal with this every year? Well, I think that conservation we got, and I'm willing to do that. Get back in touch with conservation and say, hey, next year you got to send a letter out with this. Here's what code says. Here's what this thing says. Get these things filled out and get them back to us. To us. Because according to code, it's not, not right. It may not be this. Would that be the way to fix it? But they've got to take it on them and. Make sure people are aware of that because, yeah, we could run into this. Again. We, need, we need one deadline, not two. Well, I'm, and that's when I thought I asked Eric, and I said, it's, and he said, no, the state's not looking at it. So, and it's not like it's hard work. I mean, they send out the maps and the forms and just say sign it yep. and then get it back to wait until the end. But yeah, because I, I think Janelle said she sent them out in October. I would imagine. Yeah, because I just got something similar to that where I'm going to have it signed and back by you know, whatever date yeah. it is. But it's like, I get it done right now. It's no different than your utility bill. It's due the 10th, you pay it the 10th. Mm -hmm. I get it. Some people pay it right away. Some people wait till the deadline. Yeah, yes. Yes. So it's. So that's your call. I'm not sure I just, what, what kind of. Um, Thing we would have to do from our end because the assessment notices had already been sent out and everything applied. Well, is, it, is I there anybody out there still at the Board of Review is looking at as far as? They don't look at land because we looked at that too, thinking that they could go to Board of Review, but they really don't look at the land slew part. Or egg. Yeah, it's just code says one thing and the form says something else. And it's not worth counting. It's it's didn't do it. <laughs> it's standard forms. 
No, we have to agree to it. And I, I know Enos put a lot of hours in there trying to figure out, <laughs> excuse me, taxes, what it would be, what it would affect the taxes and stuff. And I always did a, a rounded out of the blue kind of thing, and it usually comes pretty darn close. So it's anywhere from eight to ten dollars. They can reapply for this again next year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a yearly deal. It's, a year. yeah. it's, a year. it's not like the forest reserve. It's not like the forest reserve that's done once. Right. And it's and like forest. This is forest cover under the slough bill, right. and it's done every year. You got to apply for it. And there are other things too. If they just want to sign up, I think once for other conservation things, yes. that this wouldn't have to be done every it's year. Be a permanent. I mean, there's, yes, there's conservation prairie, there's, yeah, all of those different things. And, and that was one of the things I said to Eric, I said, really, they should get it out of forest cover and stick it in forest reserve. And he said, well, the state of Iowa is trying to heal that now. So oh, yeah. I said, that's not the way to go. Either. See, well, yeah. Go but that would be smarter because you do it just once. You wouldn't have to worry about it. But or, or just even other conservation programs that right. they have out there. There's not just the, I'm sure that would qualify. Yeah. Be, be yeah. More of a permanent deal. But at the present time, she's appealing our decision because as far as she's concerned, her parents did it right. That's the only information I got. Are they on Zoom? Oh, okay. Would they like to speak? Say anything? Uh, Mary is on Zoom. Mary, would you like to say anything? I'm not seeing a response. Um, action item here too. So. What's that? Yeah, that's yeah. Well, Mary trying. says she's trying to unmute. So, any other questions? Hello, here? I'm here. Hey, Mary. Hello, thank you so much for hearing this case. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, I was a little surprised with the agenda that we're already to my point, so I wasn't really ready. But uh, yes, uh, we are just so thankful for you to reconsider this issue. It seems like while my mother was uh, very late in responding and we have the documentation we found this weekend where she was notified by Janelle last November, she didn't respond until January. But um, we, we think maybe that this re response getting back in time with the postmark being before February 1st, maybe slip through the cracks somehow. Yeah, that's what we're kind of seeing. And, you know, this is, this has been um, a long time coming, I know, because of the sort of the lapse of time of understanding what's involved with the P an appeal and uh, what's involved in getting on the board of supervisors. Uh, Janelle told me she thought she could appeal it and she reached out to the assessor's office. And then when the assessor's office told her that it had the appeal had been rejected, that's when I asked if I could appeal to you all directly. And um, I was going to write a letter, so I called the auditor's office, and I spoke with the auditor um, who said that she had not seen the appeal on your agenda before. I mm. think that's it accurate. It wasn't on there. So perhaps you haven't seen this appeal in order to reject it before? We've seen it, but we haven't, it's not been on the agenda and we haven't talked about it all. I mean, and what to do. So this is the first time we're talking about it. Okay, so it's the first time that you're making a decision. So maybe it was erroneous that the assessors would tell Janelle that the 
the um, Board of Supervisors had rejected it. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. So, and I know it's very late in the year, it's May 1st, and it, it has just, you know, kind of gone back and forth, lingering. And unfortunately, um, none of my parents' children, as we are in our 70s, are in the area. So we're dealing with this kind of out of state and with copies of papers flying around. And I'm really sorry, my, my parents are both with it, at both 88 and 89, and we're lucky to have them. But this uh, did go by my mother until the last minute. It was postmarked, it was done. I think we just, Give it to him. That's my suggestion. Is that a motion? That's a motion. You're a second for that? I'll we'll second. I got a motion and a second. Any other discussion on it? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I thank you very much. And I thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, thank you. I guess, are you Nate? I'm Nate. Good to meet you, Nate. Nice to meet you guys there. Uh, so I'm late. Nope. I mean, that's that's AJ and that's Mark. It seems like if I got to drive three hours, I'm an uh, hour early. I got to drive an hour and 15 minutes. I'm 15 minutes late. Yep. So, yeah. but uh, yeah. So the spray in this year, I know that uh, one of the ditches that we worked on last year, we got a little time on it yet. That hasn't been built. I think it's a lot. H2 or whatever it is here. Oh, okay. oh down on from last two. year, yeah. And there's like I actually went around that section where that or this section that ditch goes through, and it's in pretty rough shape. It's got a lot of beaver dams in it. And I don't know if there have been trees, larger trees taken off from it in the past, and then willows yeah. had grown up. And there's still a section that's like needs cut out yet. Yeah. But I think uh I was told that it's gonna get cleaned out, probably. So yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So that we'll just like let that settle for now. And then we got uh rotation ditches from 2023 or 2020 that'll be due this year that are kind of in this area, just to the east of town and stuff like that. And <clears throat> all the bids pretty much like the quotes stay the same, and we always just come in under that like quite a bit. So I guess my only question is if there's any cleanings going to be done on any of those that we need to be aware of or the only one I spotted was the two 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 and we don't have, have, those and have any spray and then come back in right exactly days later out. right yes and Al got a hold of Jacob and he said I don't think any of that area is, he said was going to be doubled up on there so yeah. D D two we're taking out a lot of big trees okay certain area, so sure. That might sit for a couple of years too until they start the main starts to come back and then then hit that portion. Okay. See what happens there for now. But, right. Yeah. I had to add 10 because that one was just yeah. right. a year ago. Uh, 21. Yeah, it would have been in 21. We got the upper and then the last yeah. and then eight yeah. nine. I think you told me that eight, but I couldn't find a lot eight on there anywhere on all my records. Is like last seven. Yeah, I know there's a couple laps up there, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Probably seven. Yeah. I'm sure once you get up there, then you'll. Yeah. 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 Right after we cut them off that first spring, and he said, I'd like to see a little more regrowth sure. before we do it. Yeah, because so, like on my map, I got he usually yeah. just scribbled out in red as like a no spray, yeah. but if they're all cleaned up, then we'll just yeah. treat it as normal. It'd be, it'd be everything north of 100. 838. Yeah, um, the black top yeah. Was it, it runs up past Wheeler Wood, and then it also goes back up to the north mm -hmm. west. Yep. There's a lateral or whatever it is up that way. Yeah, that'd be nine, I believe. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it was all cut out of there. And okay. The stumps were left, but sure. I just wanted to cut the guys did. So that's what we did. Okay. So, yeah, we did 
appreciate being no. able to sort of left the stumps. We want okay. to appreciate the whole thing. And I know they cleared the right away on the way on the upper end of DB10. They took everything that would be in the or right away. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's growing back too. Oh, you know, I'm sure. Crapping. Yeah, so, new growth well, sure. to managed. So, yeah. No, it looks good. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fine. Yeah, DB2 would be the only major one we got going on the trees. Yeah. Um, and there'll be another one next year. We've got to make sure we get on the list to be able to make, get all those dug off on what is it, six or whatever. Well, Elliot's going to do. Oh, yeah. it's, gonna yeah. do. Yeah. They're all coming out, but um, that's going to only start disturbing when the new little trees come. So they've got to get on the spray list. A year or two after that. Yeah. That one again. Yeah. Anytime we're big trees, it's just a uh, seed bed pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Little dirt. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Good time to get after the little guys. Okay. No. So we just. Good meeting you, sir. Yeah, but glad you're taking it over. Yes. We're going to try. I mean, I always like to joke that, you know, the 12 foot of office space is a real challenge. The rest of this stuff, outside stuff is easy. Yeah. yeah. All right. We got some good guys, and some guys have been there quite a while, and some other guys are pretty motivated. So that's good. All right. Okay. Yeah. Accept this? yeah. I'll, make a, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, 2023 brush weed control plan. I'll, I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on it? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Hey, you, Nate. You bet. Hey, Thanks, you know, uh, yeah. I'll let you guys know when the guys are going to be up here. And I usually, I think my dad usually always let the church department know if there's any brush passing out there that we can. Yeah. You guys are starting to get aware that we're doing it. Uh, yeah. Especially the ones that are you're coming around the second time. Occasionally, I'll run into a landowner and they're like, well, there's no trees out there. It's like, well, oh, yes, there I've is. been here like four times. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks for getting to do it. Next is resolution 2023-16. Proving a bond purchase agreement for the sale of general obligation over the mineral bonds. It is 23 pay. Heidi? Heidi? Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, I have in front of you. Uh, I have in front of you the sales summary today. Uh, the board meeting with me has put together a resolution for you to accept the proposal um, to lock in the interest rates for the urban renewal bonds to finance um, the roads and bridges that you put in the urban renewal plan last fall. Um, so we've, we've taken a lot of steps to get to this date, uh, going through. Multiple uh, multiple hearings, and uh, last week went through the rating, you know, went through the rating call. Um, just looking up here on the wall over here in 2009, you, you had a, a rating of A, um, and you were upgraded to an A plus, um, showing that the finances, uh, what the board has been doing, what Jackie has been doing, um, to keep your fund balances. Um, level in having the cushions, the good management um, kind of brought you here to the date, debate um, where we have a contract for you to lock in the interest rates of uh, the eight-year bond. Um, I have a packet in front of you just to kind of go through the details. Um, if there's any questions, let me know. Then there's a contract to lock in interest rates um, through this. <clears throat> First page, um, first page just to talk a little bit about um, the purpose and how this is financed over the eight years. Um, the weekend's making payments and uh, this next fiscal year. It is a general obligation backed by the full fledged taxing authority. It's expected to be back with TIP revenues from the wind farm. Uh, there is an optional call date where the county can pay the last three years off early, um, the interest uh, rates will be locked in until that point. <clears throat> uh, we did go over the finance plan a few weeks ago, early in April, we were um, estimating a 3.61%. Um, we went into the bond market last week and I have um, for the time of 3.48%. Um, very good interest rate, very pleased by it. You'll see that the par amount was reduced by 300,000. The pages after this will explain that um, in detail. Page three, uh, so it shows the sources of the funds. So 
the county will be borrowing 5.7 million and receiving 297 696 and change of reoffering premium for a total amount of 5,997,696. Um, you'll notice that is just shy of the, that $6 million amount. Um, bonds are sold in $5,000 increments. So if I increased it to 5,000, it would go over that six amount. Um, down below is how the uses of the funds will be used. Um, the deposit it says rounding amount. That's the deposit to the construction fund um, that will be used to fund the projects. And then the fees associated with it, including legal financing. And then there was um, bond insurance included as well um, that totals that. <clears throat> Exhibit B is the pricing summary. Um, you'll see, you know, going to the um, left to right, um, you'll see the maturities from 2024 to 2031. Two over, we show coupons, and then we show the yield. So the yield is um, the interest rate um, that the county is receiving. But you'll notice, you know, we had that in, uh, that premium reoffering premium of two hundred ninety seven. Um, right now, where the market is, um, investors are um, interested in what what is called a premium, where they will pay. Pay you dollars up front for a higher interest rate. So you'll see the coupon is the interest rate, but the net effect of what your investors are paying up front for that almost 300,000, that's the net effect is that yield or is that yield column. Um, you do notice that um, we're in what is called an inverted yield curve right now with lower uh, uh, short term interest rates are higher than long term interest rates. Um, you'll see that it goes from a, the yield goes from a 3.25 to a 3.08. Um, then when you uh, when you take into account all the costs of financing and the time, um, a more um, I'll say a, 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 it's a more um, upfront interest rate taking it take into, into account everything with the cost, um, you come up with that 3.477 here at the bottom. That was kind of a quick overview of what a premium is, but that's just that explanation of why that borrowing amount uh, redu reduced. Mm -hmm. Exhibit C is the debt schedule. Um, you'll see that uh, it has eight years of payments through 2031 with the coupons and the interest rates here. Page five goes just the uh, history of one year bond interest rates um, because the uh, for, because the curve is inverted um, right now you know, we have that three point four eight percent averaging twenty years uh, are are about three point five percent too so um, short term rates are higher than long term rates right now but um, went into the market. Um, you have very good interest. The rating um, in your finances really helps facilitate um, a very good. So very pleased with that. Um, we did have some um, local bank off, uh, buying into some of the bonds too, which was very pleasing um, and always facilitates a good uh, market sale. Make that any questions? No. What's that? For my own deal, personal deal, these are well. Yeah, well, these are tax exempt. Yeah. But has the lower interest rate, uh, you know, uh, since the county is well well managed, that, you know, it's, this is the interest rates that you receive in this market today. Um, so very pleased. It's taken a while to get to this point. Um, I guess if there's next steps to talk about, um, you know, what we're looking at is um, <clears throat> next week you'll have your final board action where uh, Jackie will receive one more uh, one more packet of items from Dorsey and Kenny. That'll be the the 
the stack of loan documents where you're signing on the dotted line. That'll be next week. And then closing is set for, I believe, May 20th. Mm -hmm. You should have it right. Second. Second. Okay. It's in the middle of the week. The yeah. board doesn't have to act. The board doesn't have to act on that. Gotcha. Uh, 24. 24. Yes. If there's no other questions for, I guess, uh, <clears throat> resolution number 2023-16, a resolution approving the bond purchase agreement for the sale of general obligation of renewal bond series 2023-A, whereas the Board of Supervisors of Worth County, Iowa, there heretofore proposed to enter in a general obligation of renewal loan agreement and to issue general obligation bonds in a principal amount not to exceed $6 million pursuant to provisions of subsection 331 period. 4412B14, section 331, period 402, and section 331.442, and chapter 403 of the Code of Iowa, for the purpose of paying the cost to the extent of undertaking aspects of Worth County Road, Bridge, and Culvert Improvement Projects, and Urban Renewal Program of the County, which was authorized by action of the Board of Supervisors on October 17th of 22, in lieu of calling an election upon such proposal, has published notice of the proposed action has held a hearing thereon. And as of March 27, 23, no petition has been filed with the county asking that the question of entering in the loan agreement be submitted to the registered voters of the county. And whereas a preliminary official statement have been prepared to facilitate the sale of general obligation urban renewal bonds, series 2023A, to be issued in evidence of the county's obligation of the loan agreement. And the county has made provisions for the approval of the POS and has authorized its use by Northland Securities Incorporated as underwriter of the issuance of the bonds and whereas a certain bond purchase agreement has been prepared to set forth the terms of the bonds and the understanding between the county and the underwriter, it is now necessary to make provisions for the approval of the bond purchase agreement. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Supervisors of Worth County, Iowa as follows. Section one, the bond purchase agreement is hereby approved and substantially the form is presented to this Board of Supervisors. The chairperson and the county auditor are hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver the bond purchase agreement to the underwriter. Section two, further action with respect to the issuance of the bonds and the approval of the loan agreement is hereby adjourned to the next Board of Supervisors meeting on May 8th, 2023. Section three, all resolutions and orders of parts thereof in conflict with the provisions of this resolution to the extent of such conflict are hereby repealed. Section four, the resolution shall be in full force and effective immediately upon its adoption or approval as provided by law. Is there a motion to approve resolution number 2023-16? A motion to approve the resolution. Is there a second? No, certainly. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any further discussion on it? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Smeavy? Aye. Stone? Aye. Lobert? Aye. Resolution is duly adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi, for showing up. Uh, I think there's one other one I got to sign. Yes. Is it that that was your getting concrete bottles or something? Concrete, asphalt, rock, culvert, bridges. Asphalt, no, it's rock culverts. There you go. We didn't need to speak to it. So then should I still send one to Lover or will that confuse people? Um we'll send that what was that? Should I still send one? I'll send I'll send it over okay. and let her know. Okay. And then there is a time stamp on there too. Oh, so mm -hmm. we're looking at 914. Yeah, 914. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
<laughs> Let's go. Got a hot foot. Yeah, that one all done. Next on the agenda, we have resolution 2023-17 for 22-23 in fund transfer. And that's just, it's simple. It's just, there was still 1900 and some change that was left or that ended up in the mental health fund after July 1st. So um, probably from tax sale or something like that. So we need to get that out of there so that can be yeah, just done. Is that all it is, is just that one? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, I will take a motion to approve resolution number 2023-17. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion on it? Not hearing any. Roll call votes, maybe. All right. Stone? Aye. Lobert? Aye. Resolution is duly adopted. I'm going to end this this one year. Yep. So we don't yeah, have to talk that, about it next year. That's the usual. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you come up with anything for now? I haven't got any responses back yet, so I'll email them again. Okay. Uh, Melissa, are you on? Yep. You got anything for us? I'm just closing the ticket sales tonight at midnight for the um, anniversary event. And then okay. I will be at um, CVN on Friday. Um, and I always uh, extend the invite if anybody wants to come with. You come help me with a septic system Thursday and I'll go on Friday. Okay. That's a hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the offer, then I'll stay on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, do you have anything for Melissa? No. 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 Thank you, Melissa. You bet. Uh, EMS. I talked to some township clerks this week, and uh, I also, and then I, I talked to Silver Lakes Township, and they like Lake Mill. They want the option left there that if they want to sign a 28E agreement with Northwood, that they might possibly do that down the road. But right now, they still want to go that direction. I did talk to Fertile and they're more than happy, like the mayor said that night, with using Four City. And then I checked with some of the other ones on how it broke down as far as how they broke it up on their budget and stuff like that. I did get a hold of uh, uh, Eric down in Mason City called me back and I got him, he hadn't heard who had signed on with Northwood as of yet. So I got him up to date on the fact that the city of Northwood and these six townships, except for the town of Kansas, had signed 28 agreements with Northwood Ambulance Service starting July 1st. And he commented, he says, well, it, so it doesn't look like it's a county deal anymore. And I said, the three township, three and a half townships to our west and to the south are going to need to sign a 28 agreement with Winnebago County. So I said, basically Grafton Manley and Lincoln and Union and half of Danville need to get together with you and sign a 28D agreement. He says, yes, we need to come down, work that out and see what we can come up with as far as a cost and this kind of stuff. Then I did mention to him about these, uh, oh, the crossover between the like Northwoods Ambulance and uh, mutual aid agreements. I said, uh, because according to Blake, we need to, have mutual aid agreements with these people and he said yeah and he said he brought up to me the fact of they're not like services and I said I agree totally with you he said where well, we send a paramedic out in the ambulance all the time he said sometimes you guys will always have an EMT in there and possibly a paramedic so he said there's going to have to be a payment difference there 
And I said, so that is something you've got to work with the Northwood Ambulance Service. And then they would pay that bill. And he said, yes. So then I called Blake and Blake says, yes. He says, I'm going down there to work that out with him. And he says, I'm sure there's going to be a, a price factor in there. Where, like when our ambulance, if both ambulances are out, we got to call Mason City to cover us or whatever. We're going to have to, there's going to have to be money exchanged because it's not using life services, right. which makes sense to me. So that would be, and that's something North was just going to have to take care of. But we need to basically, uh, oh, and then the other thing, the reason I called him to start with was I wanted to know how much Mason City Ambulance was charging the small towns and the townships. And he said, we're not charging the towns, the townships, anything at the present time. We do not think it's fair to charge our townships or our small towns a charge when Worth County's not paying nothing. And I said, I agree with you totally. So I said, down the road then, when we figure this all out, I said, you're more than likely going to go to the townships and stuff. And he said, yeah. He said, then we'll have to cross that bridge then. So how they work that is there, you know, that I, well, I just, I wanted to know what the, how they were working with those townships. They kind of need to figure that out. They're going to figure out, you know, we've we got a year gap here sometime. Right. And I, the more I think about that, if we're going to give ARP money for this, it should go to each township equally. Every township should collect on that. Those three and a half townships over here, the two and a half down there, and plus the six up here yep. should all collect the same amount of money. Because now Northwood not only has expenses, like you mentioned that one day, they might not get any revenue back for six to nine months. They've also, if they use that ambulance service, are gonna, they gotta pay that bill. So, you know, and I don't, I know if you gave like, like for instance, on the ones on the West, if you gave them $12,000 a piece, they'd have plenty of money to cover their $40,000. Some of and them I'm, don't even have accounts. What's that? Some of them don't even have accounts. They just have little okay. apportionments that go out to the cemetery or whatever. Good. There's gonna be some. You're going to have to figure some stuff out if you do that. Well, that's what I figured. There's a lot to figure out here. Yeah. A lot of you kind of made my head start spinning. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh -uh. Well, like Deer Creek doesn't even, they don't even do they the don't budget work. Even, um, but I'm just thinking if you're going to give to the townships, right. and you know, when we were talking about premium pay, that was one of the things I heard about was it should be fair and everybody in the county should benefit off of it. It should be for all the citizens. Well, if you're going to do, if you're going to give ARP money, same, same way, everybody needs to benefit off it. And somebody asked me, they said, what about the towns? And I said, well, the towns have already spent their ARP money. So I says, I'm going by just townships. You know, and that's just my idea when I'm looking at it. But then if it comes from the county, isn't it technically benefiting all the townships? It is. Yeah. It benefits everybody. It benefits everybody. You're right, towns, townships. Well, yeah, I yeah, that's my theory. Yeah, it's coming from the township. The town's in the township. So, but that is, I just, you know, I don't have a problem with using ARP money because we got to get over the hump. Mm -hmm. But we got to renegotiate with Mason City, which Eric said, yeah, mm -hmm. we need to talk. But we also got to engage Grafton and manly and like well like tim said that night at the meeting he said we need to it's we need to go down there and talk to somebody that's exactly pretty much what he said right well, yeah and there, yeah and there's just so many unanswered questions with what, what's going on in the county right now with ambulance services it's and, and it's like, all up in the air so this first year is just going to be a, there's like, going to be a mess with it faster now yeah. and and like the july 1st deadline that you brought brought up just well, in both of those in, in that paper, in those both those emails that Winnebago sent to us, and it says right in there, we would like you to consider. There's no date on it, no not. And as long as we're working on it, we're considering it. So if they don't get it right away on July 1st, I'm sure they're not going to have a problem with it if we can get it figured out. What's that? We need, actually, because Blake hadn't been getting a hold of me, I got a hold of him a week and a half ago on two issues. One is we need to sit down with the CAD system 
I got a meeting with him tomorrow morning with Marilyn, and we're gonna be talking about the CAD. Marilyn has found a few things that are gonna take a little bit longer in the CAD um, to get all this done. We, want, we asked for a two month minimum. They wanted to go July 1st, which we're gonna be mm -hmm. just under that. Um, the second part of that, some of their people have not been certified on the radio system, which I they did get a class going, but I've requested their trainer, who's not a trainer that was trained by us, but was theoretically trained by somebody else, but I have not gotten any documentation to be able to accept that. So there's some issues we're gonna be discussing tomorrow morning on how the radio operations is gonna happen, how the CAD system is gonna be happening, because we've gotta have the two months to get that done. And right now we're we're the ones asking them, or we shouldn't be chasing them. They should be chasing us. So, and I brought that up to him last night, and he he told me about that with the radios and that house. He did mention to me that, but, but we shouldn't be chasing them. They the, should be chasing us. The county attorney has sent you the paperwork on the twenty eight east as he's got them in on five. Yeah, we said the only one that you not have in this book. Yeah. So you know what's going, and what's got to get changed. But we have to have. When yeah. we sit down with him, there's some specific things, what units, before we go in there, we can't program until we know what are going to be designated, what units are going to be designated ambulance service so that can be programmed in. And that we haven't gotten. That's why I called this meeting so Marilyn can get that information. That's good. Yeah, we got it. We, but I mean, they, just, they've got to follow up over here. It shouldn't be me chasing them now. Okay. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I got a hold of Blake last night was I know that you needed two months and I wanted to know that you had the 2080 agreements and he brought up to me about the radios and that kind of stuff. But we also got to get down south. They've got to sit down with Mason City and have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was one of the things Eric did bring up to me when I told him that Northwood and these six townships were going with the North and Ambulance. His comment was, ooh. Wouldn't it be nice if they creep a little farther south? <laughs> and I, and I what's that? And I said, I said, I said we're trying not. I said they're taking their rescue area and not trying to fight off more than they can shoot sure here. So I said, right now, as far as I'm concerned, I'd really like to see Lincoln Union, and and if Kensett doesn't want to go this way, they're close enough. They're right on the township border anyway, and have them cover that area and work out an agreement. So do we need to send an email to these people to say, hey? As far as the trustees, you mean? There's the trustees and the mayors and the city council. Like Lincoln, how are they going to pay for it? Because they already met. And that's, and that's what they've got to sit down and figure out. Right. Yeah, good point. But I mean, yeah. even if we even if we pay for it with ARP money now, you've got to figure out something a year from now. Yeah. Well, ARP money will be gone after that. Well, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a bank. Lincoln's just for the fire part, there's still that 20% above. Yeah, state to book up and do it. What's that? For that EMS, still that extra I mean, Lincoln is, took her. I'm Lincoln. Lincoln is out on the fire part. But no, Lincoln's maxed out at 16 three quarter cents. There's 40 and a half cents. And then if that doesn't cover it, you get another 20 and a quarter coming up with 16 three quarter. They're maxed out. Question for you Aren't you the assistant fire chief? Have you guys, since this thing failed in November, sat down as a fire company and said, hey, we've maxed it out with the fire department. What can we do to cut expenses and become more efficient so we've got some money left over for ambulance? Have you guys had that discussion? We've we talked with our trustees. We meet quarterly. Um, so we've talked with our trustees on what we're going to have to do to help support ambulance service. So that's a good bridge to cross. We've had that discussion. Um, because, and that's what Danville went in the union. Um, so yeah, we've already started those discussions. Good. Because we know it's coming. We just got to try to figure it out that the difficult part's going to be with the city with, you know, they're only able to tax so much. And, and we, and yeah, obviously we, we, we see a cut in our, our budget. And there might be such a deal that you might have to form your own little district. Maybe. And there might be such a deal that these three and a half townships over here might have to form their own district. It's not hard to do. And then they can go all the way to a dollar per thousand, which is more than we had on the ballot in November. So. Oh, like that costs all over. It's been a lot easier to go countywide, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, I, I mean, well, you I'm, said at that time, though, when I asked you, I said, how much is this? You said 525000 and we're not sure we got enough then, right? It was going to be close. Yeah. So it doesn't do much good to start something, and then we don't, we don't have enough money to finish it anyway. So. But, yeah, it's basically, it's a township, city-type deal, and somebody's got to start discussing some of this stuff. And I got Eric up to date on it, so he said, yeah, we'll have to sit down and discuss that. Yeah. Like, say, for this, this first year being a big hoop to jump through, it's, oh, we don't foresee him changing up, and it's going to be for the following. Oh, yeah. The following years. Yeah. Because there's no budget money. Well, all right. We just need to know from that two and a half townships in those towns what the bill's going to be. I can tell you, we're not in the, any, as you know, we're in a bad situation, but I just read the Charles City paper and them in Floyd County, the company they have has moved from right at 200000 to 400000 and 413000 to 435000 in the next three years. So they're doubling what they're going to pay. So if you think this is over, oh, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. You yeah. know, so. Um, but. Oh, and this is with Northwood not not paying people per se. I mean, if they have to pay people down the road, then it's... how long is that going to last until it becomes? They're paying a people in a stipend, but if they have to pay for 24 7, 365, which could happen down the road. Which could happen. But I mean, Winnebago's kind of doing a little bit different and not coming up with, you know, it doesn't cost quite so much down there. But we also don't have 27,000 people in a town to help pay for it either. You know? Well, and they, they've, got some, the they've got something established. They've been there for yep. 30 years. And so they can, they can make it a, they can grow a little bit, make it easier than starting from ground zero. See the state still help find a way to pump some money back to us from something. Well, there's some legislation down there that says sports betting can come back with stuff like this. We're yeah. all ninety. They get stores, whether it was whether it was fifty percent or eighty percent. Anything. There's over there's around twenty million sitting there. It's just good enough. Yeah. It's it was House File Seven Ten. It went through the House, so it's up to the Senate now on whether it goes any further. So it's going to be one of those where we want this, you want that. Yeah, they're going to do some negotiating and some of their bill. So hopefully, yeah, that's a good place, place to use it. Yeah, oh yeah. It would be fantastic if it's they can help us out with that. It's a nationwide problem. Right. You know, it's, in, it's yep. addressed. You know, not just it's not going away. New. So, yeah, if you can get the Manly Mayor and the Grafton Mayor or the City Council, some of those people to get together with Eric. Especially with rural counties. Start areas. pounding this thing out as to what they're thinking and where it's happening. Danville's pretty much split down the middle the way it looks to me on your maps. Yep. Half of it's Jackie's going left or or Jackie's I'm going east. <laughs> yep. You're on side, Jackie. You're part of Mason City. I looked at the thing the other day. But anyway, that's what that's basically all the updates I've got for you on Just don't get hurt for you. EMS no. that I dug into you. this week. And I didn't get as far as I wanted to because I got busy Thursday and Friday. So do good. I still got to get a hold of Thomas and do some more. But yeah, that's what we're at right now. We need we need those two and a half townships and the, those three cities to fend for ourselves. A lot, what's that? Fend for ourselves. Well, try to work out a deal so we know how much ARP money we need to get over the hump here the first year, and then also figure out how you're going to do it down the road. This is short term band aid here. Yeah. Because even like Northwood, and I talked to Blake about that, I'd like to see at least from seven in the morning to nine at night a paramedic on duty, period. Which means you're going to have to tax right. for it. And I got no problem paying taxes for it. But if they're within five minutes or whatever. But, and I think that's fine too. I have no problem with the way they're doing it right now. We'll see how it works out because mm -hmm. they're going to end up with three paramedics. And I don't know about the EMTs right now. I don't know if that school is over with or not. So. But that's all. Uh, that's the information I got on that anyway. Yeah, if you want to get a hold of those guys and set up a meeting. Yep. 
close to working on that. And I'll get a hold of Thomas and do some work there. So, um, department had discussions. Anything, Dan, other than what you've already told us? No, just two trucks for one. Got quite a little bit of damage from the deer rack and then one with the windshield. So the planes are being put in. Okay. Anybody else? Jason's got it. He was kind of holding off, waiting on plate racing to come down, but the water main pipe is the only pipe that does not move yet. Everything else has been creeping down. And I talked to him last week and said, just get it off the bed. Yep, we're not going to. It has to be finished by the end of 24, right? Six. I thought it. But the pro. Oh, no, yes. You're right. The project has to be declared by the end of 24 and done by the end of 24. Well, the last week, too, that there's been discussion on uh, if you don't use it. It's hanging. Oh, so yeah. We're. They're, they're really starting to talk about pulling it back. So, you know, somebody else. You know. Because that's a lot of other counties I've talked to that are they've got a lot of stuff earmarked, they haven't spent the money yet, and they're starting to worry about you just start writing checks and get it to those entities or where they're going to put it, you know. And then when their project starts, they've got the money just so it's back and gone so the, the feds can't come and just take it back. Yeah, hopefully, it doesn't. Yeah, happen. we need to get information on all this stuff, so that's not just curious. Yeah, it's probably change the rules. Yeah. What else is new? <laughs> uh, Supervisors Weekly. The only thing I had was I got a hold of Kevin Springer, and he still got the crack in the public health building on the agenda, the sidewalk, and the flagpole stuff. I asked him if he could get us a bid or an estimate, and he said, I can, but he said it's going to be higher and I'll get out. And he said it'd be cheaper if we just do it labor material. Uh, take a look on it. So I said, keep us, he's got us on the agenda. We could get the polls for the veterans in. Yeah, and more he said, on, and he more. said, Jerry Bakken is on in the, he's good. running into that. Okay. It, which is good. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Because yeah, Seattle, the world, they come down there. Yep. So he's got all three of them on the agenda. So, but so he's just going to do them material and labor. And I think that's, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, what most good. that's all I had other than dealing with EMS most of the week. I had uh, care connections over in Emmitsburg. Um, just had to make some adjustments. Found out uh, our budget was off just a touch, but it was still good. 164000 good. More coming in on revenue, so we had to make some adjustments there. And So she's just about got that ready to go for the year. That was about the bulk of the we're just budget stuff. So everything's looking really, really good over there. Anna, um, who covers our area. Um, was over and gave a report, and I told her we were very happy with what's going on. I haven't heard any complaints. When people call, they get answered, or they get called back, they get direction. It's it's going good. We're getting to see a, a lot more going on over here with mental health. So it's been a good thing. So, and then I did talk with Jason Petersburg Monday. Um, the, the he's going to get the water main project going for sure, and then we are going to get this. Uh, the water rates and stuff done. I said we gotta get this done like the next month. Let's get we've had that stuff for a little while now. So because wasn't people's service supposed yeah, to yeah we got yes. the, we got we got a rate study from them. Now we just gotta we Jason and I are gonna go meet with all the owners have discussion get the number figured out and then because we have to do a notice um, mm -hmm. like 30 days that's an ordinance change technically for out there and we may we may put other stuff in that same ordinance change at the same time because that ordinance is like a page and a half. It's pretty vague. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so you change it yearly. yearly. Yeah. Yes. Instead of waiting. Yeah. So even going up, so it's going to be possible. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Like yep. So, so yeah. So that hopefully within the next month here we'll have that at least to the point where we can publish it for a public hearing and then take effect shortly sure. after that. So. Ah, that's all I had. I had uh, just Iowa workforce development. I uh, had a, the speakers on ahead of time uh, talking about the uh, large underground power line be taking place from Mesa City to Chicago. Coming up in the next few years, um, they were looking at support 
our district and stuff, finding a letter of support for training and stuff for the people probably working some of it through NIAC. Um, talked about, I think it'd be over, over 900 new, at least long-term jobs probably for that. And then need some training for some people that would be maintenance and stuff too coming forward. Left over figures at home, but it's a, it's a huge project um, and pretty beneficial for everybody. So we just went over the each department's reports. Did you see uh, Mark's comments? Uh, safety, meeting safety meeting next Monday. They're asking for representation from all the departments or buildings at least. Okay. Good. No, I did not check it. Thank you. That's what I got you there. Uh, anything on next week's agenda? Looks, looks good to me. So if there isn't anything else, I'll motion to adjourn. I have a motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, Dan.